papers and see what they've made of the celebrations so far. Well, joining us once again is the Royal Historian Tessa Dunlop and our very own Rihanna Mills, uh, fresh from the party last night. Managed to um, set that alarm and make it down to the studio, exactly. which is all good. Uh, right, let's have a look at the papers. The Sunday Telegraph, it photographed the Queen's Tea Party with Paddington Bear, which I think featured in last night's special concert. Big highlight for lots of people, including me. It's also the image on the front of the Sunday Times, which calls the event the party of a lifetime for the world's grandmother. Marmalade, Your Majesty, asks the Mail on Sunday, and the Sun on Sunday goes with Intruder at the Palace, a bit of a joke there about Paddington Bear's surprise appearance alongside the Queen. Sunday Express next, and that quotes Prince Charles's speech from last night, thank you for being there for us, Mummy. And we can go now to the Sunday Mirror, which features the other Queen, Brian May, who performed for the Royals in front of Buckingham Palace last night. And the Observer describes the Jubilee festivities. You might be able to hear some of the rehearsals now as a long weekend and a carnival of memory. Now we're enjoyed by Rihanna and Tessa. The brass band is going behind us. It's very loud for us. I'm assured that we can still be heard. So we can great flower. <laughs> this is it's all go, it's all action uh, ahead of the big pageant uh, later. <laughs> from Windsor and of course it's the only one of the five classics that she hasn't won I say she but as an owner of a horse and they were all out in force Anne and her family all exquisite equestrians I don't know if you thought the trooping of the colour trooping the colour on Thursday Anne is such beautiful poise for yeah. a woman almost 70 compared to brother Charles not quite so good on horseback <laughs> as his sister but they were there and really interestingly I work a lot with women of the Queen's age and capture their stories. And what is it that helps people stay alive and well a very long time? Without a doubt, having a hobby keeps you alive longer, and the Queen's hobby is horses. Funnily enough, Margaret Thatcher, born this, almost within the same year, her hobby was politics. That died when she left number 10. And the Queen, having that one neutral occupation, has just kept her going. It's fueled her. Actually, I'm thinking about images of the Queen that I remember. Quite often it's as a horse races when she's got that beam on her face, she's yeah. cheering. Yeah. It's like she can't contain herself. Yeah. And you see a different side to her almost. Yeah, and, and, and the likes of um, Willie Carson, um, who rode for her, has talked in the past about how she is just so at home with, as he described them, racing folk. So he was saying how, I don't know, there's a long lineup of people and as soon as she gets to somebody that she knows she can have a good old chat with about <laughs> horses, it's like the shoulders drop, she's like, right, I'm here, I'm here for the, the duration, I'll have a good old natter here. I and that, it. yeah, I think you're right, that's what keeps her going. And I, I think of all the things that she's missed this weekend, yeah, missing the Epsom Derby will have been a, a bit of a disappointment, but yeah. look, she can watch it at home at least, can't she? And let's be honest, everyone talked about Party in the Park. Is she Party in the Park, Party at the Palace? Will she be watching? Most 96-year-olds are tucked up in bed like Paddington Bear at 9, 10 o'clock at night, but the Derby on in the day, she'll have, she'll have been sorry to have not been there. But of course, there's more festivities today and some that no longer require the Queen because of technology. This, of course, is the Gold State Coast. I was going to say, first seen in 1762 when it took George III to the state opening of Parliament. Quite magnificent. And we're just looking at the Sunday Times here, aren't we, in their coverage there. Digital Queen takes a ride back in time. It doesn't look the most comfortable of coaches, though. No, the Queen won't be sorry to miss this at all. She described <laughs> it as horrible to ride in. And in fact, in keeping with all her forebears, because William IV uh, said it was like being tossed at sea. Uh, he was a sailor, must be said, before he became king. And uh, apparently Queen Victoria didn't like its oscillations. But nobody's in 
minute today, just these holograms. You probably know more about this stuff. Yeah, than and look, the, the organisers of the pageant are really excited about this because, as Tessa was saying, we have not seen this on the streets of London for, for so long. But, yeah, look, this whole day, there's going to be lots of, all. Oh, there's going to be lots of different surprises and you'll have to wait and see what, you, what we're going to sort of perform for you. But with this, it sounds like they're going to use all kinds of clever technology to, to bring to life that coronation moment and I think bring it to a new generation because... Obviously, we've all kind of grown up with the Queen, but for so many of us, we weren't around back then. But the big question is, and I think this will be asked increasingly over the coming weeks, for cost. Has mm -hmm. it been worth it? This pageant alone, 15 million I know, I will bring it. Wow, that's a lot of money, particularly yeah. at a time when we're facing, what, the biggest drop in living standards um, yeah. since records began, inflation, you know... It, it's, I mean, figures. it's lies and lies of statistics. How do you spin it? Visit England are saying, yeah, but this is worth 1.2 billion quid to our economy. Certainly it has projected an idea of Britain, that quintessential, you know, red soldiers, fair skin hats and queens with tiaras across the world. And hopefully we recoup that in hard currency from, from other folk. Yeah, it was really interesting. I, before it all kicked off, I went out to Hemel Hempstead, um, basically one of the places, one of the first places the Queen went to when she became Queen. And I went to a pub there and the landlord said to me, she's magic, but the world isn't magic. And I think that really kind of sums it up for some people. People are still struggling with the cost of living crisis. Some people will look at this and say, oh, my goodness, this is a huge amount of money. But then I think as you go across the country, you see people doing those street parties, getting together on a bit of a shoestring, really, and, and not having to spend an absolute fortune. I went to another place where all the food's being donated, everyone's invited, it's pay as much as you can. And so I think for the Queen, that's, that's probably what and it's, it's about. And it's days of work it's, for a lot of people as well. And yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. look at us here right now. And and argue, us, you know, still, you know. <laughs> and, and arguably, um, I thought you meant it's four days of work for some people, because a lot of people... Oh, that's also working. a very good point. Yeah. yeah, and also retail's had a massive bonanza food, We're, all the branding, uh, the bunting. About to go off there. Uh, uh, great to uh, talk. Thank you uh, very much indeed. Lots more coverage after this break about the Queen's Platinum Jubilee.